Welcome to Pocket Gamer TV, the only dedicated mobile gaming show in the world. Coming up, we have mobile game reviews of Ghostbusters, The Blob and Pro Evolution Soccer 2009. We'll also be taking a sneak look at some hot forthcoming mobile games and listing the top 5 Mac games that should be ported to the iPhone. So sit back, give your thumbs a rest and enjoy. Far Cry 2 has torn up the console charts with its hectic one-man war machine gameplay, and now it looks as though Gameloft has managed to translate that digital warfare to the mobile platform in full blood and gut style. Taking to war-torn Africa, it's your happy task to hunt down the nefarious gun trafficker, the Jackal. The 10 2D scrolling levels feature both on foot and motorcycle action that takes you through the savannah, across deserts, and deep into the jungle. You'll be armed with grenades, flamethrowers, mine detectors, and sniper rifles, so all the ingredients for some serious third-person shooter mischief are certainly in place. Place. The game is due for imminent release, so look out for a video review soon. Fish Labs is about to unleash its first in-house mobile sports game, Snowboard Hero, and it's looking like a corker. Set in detailed snow-filled landscapes, Snowboard Hero promises some deliciously irresponsible stunts with a variety of different challenges to get you out on the piste. There are alternative downhill routes touted and a slew of unlockable special moves to gain in exchange for meeting some harsh time limits. Fish Labs' trademark 3D visuals are certainly up to standard, so hopefully there will be some blistering gameplay to match. The timing for this one couldn't be better, so keep your eyes peeled for our forthcoming review. Prince of Persia Zero is the latest outing on mobiles for everyone's favourite Persian Royal, and it's releasing to coincide with the hotly anticipated console version. The game sticks to the series 2D roots, but adds an extra element to the gymnastic gameplay by requiring you to work closely with the mysterious Elika to perform your free-running stunts. You will also be able to ride dragons, swing from ropes at dizzying heights, and battle multitudes of enemies in expansive environments filled with traps and secrets. As you can see, the game looks gorgeous, and given the parkour Prince's record on mobiles, we are confident that it will be a blast to play too. As ever, a review is on its way. Ghostbusters has a good track record when it comes to game conversions, and this latest addition to the franchise definitely doesn't let the side down. Based in New York, it's up to the familiar team of Venkman, Ray, Spenger and Winston to rid the city of its supernatural inhabitants. Each level consists of a maze, and your objective is to guide a ghost through the labyrinthine levels into a trap. You do this by playing as each Ghostbuster in turn, passing the ghost from proton gun to proton gun until you can finally capture it. You also have to keep the spectres away from scattered patches of green ectoplasmic slime, as if a ghost gets slimed three times, it escapes through the interdimensional rift and it's game over. The city is split up into zones, and each zone is divided into about ten levels. This makes for a pretty expansive game, and maintaining control over the unruly apparition is a satisfying challenge, especially on the tougher later levels. There's not much to complain about in Ghostbusters, but one noticeable flaw is that the backgrounds on the ghosts don't really vary much as the game progresses. The presentation is generally good, however, and it's really a minor misstep. Ghostbusters is a superb one-thumb game that incorporates all the ghostly capes of the source material. It will have you humming the theme tune all day long and itching for another go. The Blob has the sort of original premise that makes you wonder why it's never been done before. You play a large blob tasked with bringing colour back into a world that's had all of its pigment sapped out of it by a nefarious group called Inked. The core mechanic involves guiding your blob around various cityscapes, sucking up paint from globules scattered about the place, and then bumping into the walls of all the buildings you can find in order to paint them that colour. There are other challenges that you can activate too, such as painting a certain number of buildings against the clock or racing from checkpoint to checkpoint. You can also complete sub-goals, such as painting landmark certain colours and freeing civilians who've been frozen solid by sheer boredom. It has buckets of charm and you can play as an obsessive completist colouring everything you can find or as a casual player just racking up enough points to progress. It's fair to say that due to its simplicity it won't hold everyone's attention and the inked agents you occasionally do battle with are more of a distraction than a challenge, but for those who fancy a splash in something new that's part puzzle and part paintbrush, the blob is as fresh and exciting a game as you'll find. Gaming has never been Apple's strong suit, but with the iPhone providing this year's surprise handheld gaming success story, it's high time some of the Mac's better gaming moments got a second release on the iPhone. Sketch Fighter 4000 Alpha is a casual Mac classic from Ambrosia that allows you to draw your own game world and then battle your way through it on a tiny spacecraft. The iPhone's touchscreen would be ideal for sketching out the necessaries, and steering your ship around using the accelerometer couldn't fail to be fun. If you're watching Ambrosia, you know it makes sense. The Mac-only game Feist is the thesis project of two boffins from Zurich University, and its hypnotic lo-fi visuals and indie charm would make it the perfect platforming darling for the hip and trendy iPhone crowd. There's a complete lack of platformers on the system, so Feist could have the genre all to itself. Introversion Software's Darwinia isn't a Mac-only game, but it was extremely popular among Mac users and the iPhone was made to play real-time strategy games on. The abstract visuals would look great on the device, and there's sure to be a ready 
ready-made fan base who'd love another go in portable form. Marathon Durandal is Bungie's classic FPS and it's crying out for an iPhone port. Its retro FPS controls could easily be mapped to a touchscreen and a Wi-Fi deathmatch option would bring some much needed competitive multiplayer gaming to the device. Dark Castle is a cult classic and was one of the original Macintosh's most popular games. The recently updated Return to Dark Castle from Super Happy Fun Fun brings the game bang up to date with some gloriously animated visuals, and as long as the controls were done right, the game's trademark offbeat humour would make it the adventure game of choice for the iPhone. That's our top 5, but there are plenty of other popular Mac games that would be great on the iPhone, so be sure to let us know which games we forgot in the comments. With both Real Football and FIFA having already played their starting 11 this season, Pro Evolution Soccer 2009 has a lot to contend with. Though the overall feeling is that Pro Evolution Soccer 2009 is more of a casual take on the beautiful game, scoring demands a patient approach. It's possible to slowly build up your attack, switching sides with ease to dance your way into the box. In comparison to its peers, Pro Evo 2009's goals carry real weight too, with the ball positively lashing into the top corner. 2008's optional one-touch control method is back, which means that all the major actions such as passing, shooting and tackling are assigned to the 5 key and executed via a context sensitive system. It's not the option to pick if you intend to embark on a full league campaign as it can limit the breadth of your play but it's great for quick bus stop bouts. The gameplay in general is much more about fast fixed footy thrills and hyper realism and the absence of many teams real names on the roster does jar against Pro Evo's impressive statistical depth. But rather than shoehorn an overly complex kickabout onto mobiles, Glue and Konami have succeeded in creating a real crowd pleaser that's purpose built for phones. Pro Revolution Soccer 2009 has a distinct retro feel and a sense of charm all of its own. Thanks for watching Pocket Gamer TV. If you enjoyed it, be sure to head over to pocketgamer.co.uk where you will find some more stellar mobile and handheld gaming news, reviews, and features in sharp witted written form. That's it for now. Until next time, happy Pocket Gaming.